Okay, hello, welcome back. Welcome to the last video of this module. So we are talking about angular velocity and we want to relate it to uh, different representations of rotation that we have seen so far. And we have looked at how it relate angular velocity to the rate of change of um, oil angles, to the rate of change of rotation matrix, to the rate of change of axis and angle of rotation. And the last, but probably the, the most useful one, well, not the most useful one, all of them are useful in their own little ways, um, is relating them to Euler parameters. So as a reminder, um, remember what Euler parameters were. Euler parameters, we have epsilon x, it's a four parameter, epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z, and eta. So these four numbers represent rotation and how we could relate them to a previous uh, materials we can define a vector E, which is E X I plus E Y J plus E Z K. And this one is A, which was the axis of rotation. Axis of rotation in axis angle representation of rotation times sine of phi and phi was the no phi half. And phi was the angle of rotation. And the last one, eta was just cosine of phi over two. So that's how you could easily find the Euler parameters if you know the axis and angle of rotation. And the good thing about this um, Euler parameters is that if you don't have any rotation, your Euler parameters are um, very well defined. So you don't have that issue of at zero rotation, you can have infinite choice for A. Mm. So that is Euler parameters, eta. So again, we want to do the same thing as we have done in the previous videos, relate the rate of change of these parameters to angular velocity. Um, so if I know my, what do I want to do? Let me think. So I, I want to find the rate of change of these parameters, eta dot. Let's just start with that because it's a little easier. So eta dot, I'm just taking time derivative of this. And taking the derivative of that, I have minus one half sine of phi over two times phi dot. And from exactly from the previous video, we we figured phi dot. Let me do a long equal that phi dot was actually my omega vector dot a. So this phi dot becomes minus one half sine of phi over two times omega dot a. And I can kind of bring this sine of phi over two next to a. So a times phi over two is actually my vector epsilon. So what I have, this one, I'll write it here equals minus one half omega dot epsilon. Very nice. So if I know my omega, that is the rate of change of 
eta deriving the the rate of change of epsilon vector is going to be a bit longer so you can start by taking derivative of this um, relation so what i have is a dot sine of phi over two plus one half a phi dot cosine of phi over two this is a and i can keep doing a bunch of derivations that the details are in the textbooks i'm going to skip that what i end up with this rate of change of vector epsilon is minus one half epsilon cross omega plus one half eta times omega and i hope you can appreciate the much simpler form of this equation compared to to the one uh, we had for the axis angle in the last video. So the Euler parameters are same concept, but much nicer behaving set of parameters. As sim similar to what we had before with the axis angle, this, oops, what's happening? This E, uh, E dot, is the, the, the total rate of change. What we like to have is um, not this total change, but E dot relative, which is the rate of change of E dot X I plus E dot Y J plus E dot Z Okay, this is what we, we like to have. And we can do the same trick. This one is um, E dot R, the one I have up there, minus omega cross E. And I can again do the same thing. This E dot plus epsilon cross omega. And if I do do that at the top equation, just add E cross omega to that. This is an ugly E or epsilon. If you do this, the minus half becomes plus half. So this one is one half epsilon cross omega plus one half eta times omega. And now remember this is um, the rate of change of these little components of epsilon along the, the IJK. So if I, if I just expand this a little, um, instead of writing these in vector form, I just write individual equations for each um, component along IJK, I end up with four set of equations. So epsilon dot X is one half, what do I have? Omega Z, epsilon Y minus omega Y, epsilon Z plus omega X at epsilon y dot is one half omega x epsilon z minus omega z epsilon x plus omega y eta epsilon z dot is one half Omega y epsilon dot x minus omega 
Uh, X, Epsilon, Y, plus Omega, Z times Eta, and Eta dot is minus one half. Omega X, Epsilon X, all of this plus, yeah, plus Omega Y, Epsilon Y, plus Omega Z, Epsilon Z. Okay, so if I know my omegas, these are the rate of change of epsilon x, y, z, and it. So what is really significant and important and useful, extremely useful, is imagine you have a sensor that measures omega x, omega y, and omega z in the body fixed axis. That sensor exists, it's called a gyroscope, and it essentially, it exactly does that. So it, it sends out or measures the angular velocities along these three body fixed um, axes. And what you can do is start from a, a kind of a, um, a starting frame and start integrating these equations. So at every time step, we have these omegas. And I know my current uh, values of uh, omega, I'm sorry, epsilon x, y, z. And I can find the derivatives and just increment them numerically, essentially integrate these equations to see where I land next time. And this formulation, can very easily gives you orient how your orientation is changing um, as time progresses. So this is something any cell phone or any variable device does to, to calculate the orientation of your device given the, the measurements from the gyroscope inside the device. So when, when at the end of the day, at the end of some motion or during the movement, you you calculate your epsilon x y z and eta. You know how your body is oriented in a space. Um, all right, so that is all from the kinematic side. We looked at positions. We looked at velocities, and that is good enough for us to be able to write equations of motion and describe the dynamics of rigid bodies in, in 3D space. So I leave you with this and yeah, until next time that we start looking into dynamics. So see you then.